in this lesson we're going to learn how we can able to send a sensor data from the node MCU so we will going to connect a temperature sensor LM35 to the node MCU and then we will send it to the ThinkSpeak cloud platform now if you know ThinkSpeak is a very popular IoT platform which can be used to send a data to the server and then you can able to show that into nice beautiful widgets or you can even store the data in the database on a ThinkSpeak server so it's really great and it's very easy to use this video is sponsored by Altium Designer world's leading PCB design software company. If you want to take your idea from a breadboard to an actual professional looking circuit board, just like any other electronics product, you must give it a try. It's a free. Check the link in the video description to get your first hand experience. And I'm sure you will enjoy working with it. If you have a ThinkSpeak account already, then you have to head over to the dashboard and dashboard will look something like this as it's shown on my screen. So. In the ThinkSpeak world, they call something called channel. So we have to create a channel in order to show the data, a temperature data coming from the node MCU. So we will click on a new channel and then it will give us some sort of form that we have to give the name to the channel. Now, because we will be sending a temperature data, we will give the name temperature monitoring and description. Basically, it's an optional. So I will say LM35 temperature sensor data whatever it's spelling is wrong but that's fine and there is something in the things pick they call field now you you can enable a multiple field if you like okay like this you can enable as many as you want but basically you need a field based on how many sensor data point that you want to send so here in this case we have only one temperature sensor connected to node mcu esp8266 so we are just interested in showing just the temperature value so we will just select or by default it gets selected the field one and then we scroll down and we will click on the save channel button now this channel will get created and as you can see there is a field one chart now look at this this is your uh, channel name this is your unique channel id this is the author and the access is private for now it just doesn't matter whatever it is now if you look at this uh, basically it show you in a private view so there's a chart of a field one now field one doesn't have any sensor value right now but if you have a real sensor value then you can able to see the temperature data into this field shows up and then you can even add more widgets and other things which maybe we will talk a little bit later all right so everything is fine so far now let's head over to the microcontroller programming part this is a temperature sensor lm35 and i'm going to place on the breadboard something like this so you can clearly see all three legs of the temperature sensor and make sure the flat surface of the temperature sensor is facing towards us means towards the camera and the extreme left pin will be vcc that's going to connect to 3.3 volt the middle one will be uh, an output of the LM35 temperature sensor that will connect, going to connect to A0 pin because LM35 is an analog temperature sensor and the extreme rightmost pin, this one, will going to connect to the ground. So let me take the jumper wire. As I said, extreme left pin, this one, will going to connect to 3.3 volt to give the power to LM35. All right, then the middle pin, which is an output of the temperature sensor, this one will going to connect to the A0 pin. And here is the A0 pin on uh, node MCU because uh, LM35 is an analog temperature sensor. And then we need another jumper wire, extreme right pin of the temperature sensor. And that will going to connect to the ground pin on the node MCU. Okay, so that's how we're gonna connect LM35 with Node MCU. That means ESP8266. Now we have to open up the Arduino IDE. So if you have the Arduino IDE, uh, then we have to head over to the sketch, include library, and we have to click on manage libraries because since we want ESP8266 node MCU to talk to the ThingSpeak, we have to install a ThingSpeak libraries uh, so that we don't have to write a bare metal code or the HTTP request and everything hard coded. Otherwise, this code will be very, very long. So keep it simple and just search here ThingSpeak and uh, probably 
once the search finish you can see thinkspeak by mathwork corporation so thinkspeak is basically a product of mathwork corporation it's it's a famous product you might know matlab software so we select the library and we click on install so the latest uh, firmware or the latest library will get installed when we click on install button so we have to wait till this uh, thing speak library get installed for node mcu or esp8266 and now you can see it is installed so we give a little respect and we can click on the close so the library manager goes away now we have to create a fresh new uh, project so uh, now there's a project by default it came up so i just select all this uh, piece of code uh, and i already have written a code which i can just paste it here and just to save the time uh, i will going to explain you line by line whatever it is okay so first of all before we do anything we have to save the file it's basically a good practice so click on save as select desktop and i would like to give this name as a thing speak um, node mcu esp8266 this will be esp and then save it now this program got saved now the way our node mcu talks to our thing speak cloud platform um, uh, through Wi-Fi right because our node MCU has to have the Wi-Fi so we have to put the SSID into this code SSID is basically your Wi-Fi access point name so in my case it's a binary update and then we have to put the password so I'm going to put my password here all right and then with the code so you see we have one integer variable val and then we have integer variable pin which is a0 because um, to pin a0 we will going to connect uh, lm35 temperature sensor on uh, esp8266 or the node mcu now we have this wi-fi client um, class so we create the client object and we call all the time uh, this uh, node mcu as a client the hardware client that will talk to the things pick server and then you see here you have uh, my channel number so basically every things big channel has to have a unique uh, channel number or channel id what you can say so we have to head over to our uh, things big uh, dashboard and we have to click on api keys in the api keys you see there's a right api key and uh, we have to copy this right api key that means this one right so this is the right api key so we'll copy this right api key and then we uh, oh sorry this is a channel number by the way so uh, we have to go to the thing speak um, uh, channel again and we have to copy this channel id so copy this channel id and then we have to replace it here so here goes our channel id and now another is right api key right so this is the right api key that i have explained to you so i can copy this right api key and i will put it here so this is my right api key basically and uh, then you see there's a serial uh, initialization a 9600 baud rate and then delay and then you know it just connects to the internet through the wi-fi because we put the ssid and password and if you have wrote any you know arduino program then you know that we are using this val variable which is a global variable which define on the top and we read uh, the pin a0 pin and then we multiply with 0 0.322265 to convert uh, the lm35 temperature sensor data into degree celsius because uh, when we read the analog value from the analog sensor using microcontroller we get a default uh, adc counts and we have to convert that into degree celsius and now the reason i have to multiply with this number is because lm35 basically operates on the voltage range 4 volt to i think 30 volt or something like that i don't exactly remember it but and the node mcu works on 3.3 volt so i just have calculated this this number and if you if you want to know how to calculate this number i put up another video where i explained about how to work with lm35 temperature sensor with arduino so you can check that video and then you can easily come up with this number it's not a very big deal 
And then we store the temperature sensor value into this value variable and then we just print on a serial monitor and then we print it, print it, this all nonsense, then wait for one second and then finally uh, we call this function called write fill. Now this write fill function which belongs to the ThingSpeak library that just we have installed, this will going to push the data into your channel because this channel number is unique. This channel uh, write API key will be unique for your uh, ThingSpeak channel that we just have created uh, temperature monitoring and this value variable will be something that we want to push the data all right so that's how this uh, data will gonna go into the into the cloud or the server now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to save uh, the file okay save the code and then head over to the tools and uh, make sure the board is properly selected so in my case it's a uh, node MCU uh, 12e module uh, because we are using ESP8266 and then also make sure that um, you have to select the right COM port but when you select the COM port make sure your um, um, node MCU is connected to um, to the laptop so just now I have connected and you see the port shows up so I select the COM3 and then on a top left corner I click on upload button and that's basically how this code will get uploaded onto the node MCU and um, if everything goes well then uh, I mean before you make sure that everything goes well we have to open a serial monitor and then we can see the temperature sensor data shows up on our um, serial monitor and then we can go to a things big channel just to uh, confirm whether we really receive uh, the temperature sensor data um, from the node MCU ESP8266 to the ThingSpeak cloud platform and then in a ThingSpeak because it supports HTTP protocol now if you wonder like uh, what this uh, ThingSpeak.h header file is all about then the ThingSpeak.h header file basically implements the HTTP protocol so um, the way node MCU talks to the ThingSpeak is by using HTTP protocol in order to send the temperature sensor data from node MCU to the ThingSpeak server so every time when you send a piece of data from your node MCU to the ThingSpeak, it will send in the form of HTTP request. And then you get the response back from the ThingSpeak to the hardware that, okay, this communication works absolutely fine. And then only you can able to see the temperature sensor data onto the ThingSpeak server. So that's basically just to avoid um, uh, writing the HTTP uh, request from the scratch we use this thing speak library so that we get so you see the code is uploading right now in our lower left corner it still says uploading so we have to wait till it shows uh, done uploading so let's be a little bit patient and make sure we receive the data so now you see it says done uploading so we go to tools and click on uh, serial monitor and if everything goes well then we can able to see the temperature data will show up as you can see i am getting a 25 degrees celsius now if i go to my thingspeak dashboard make sure we have to head over to the private view because by default this uh, channel will be a uh, private so it will not share the data will not share with everybody and then you can see you have the temperature uh, coming up right now you might look at this uh, both uh, you know window side by side and uh, you might see that there is a delay between uh, the data is coming here so basically in the ThingSpeak the free version of ThingSpeak you are limited to send your data after every 15 seconds so in the code we have given uh, look at let's look at here like um, maybe somewhere okay i'm not sure uh, it's just sending continuously but it sends the data every 15 seconds okay because that's the limitation that's why you don't see every second the data is coming up okay if you read the documentation and pricing and other things then you can able to see that they say like uh, with the free account you are limited and you're bounded to send it after 15 seconds so it takes a 15 seconds so that's how this code basically works now you can see the temperature is coming up now if I uh, rub my sensors flat surface okay you will see slowly the temperature rise up you can see the data printing is 31 now okay it will take a 15 seconds or something like that to show the changes onto the dashboard but as I said you know you have to be a little bit patient so let's just wait for new piece of data 
and as I start rubbing the sensor maybe you see now the temperature jumps up it's become 32 now and the temperature will gradually decrease it will not just quickly come back to um, just a normal thing so you see the data is coming up now so let's say if you want to show this temperature data into nice beautiful widgets okay instead of um, showing into just in a chart form so you have to click on the add widget and then we have to select the widget let's say in this case it's a gauge so select the gauge click on next and then give the name to the gauge I would rather give it a temperature I'm okay with that then the field one value that we want to show because we have now LM35 temperature data in the field one and the minimum value is zero maximum I live in India and it never goes more than 50 degrees Celsius so I would say 50 even 50 never reaches but that's fine then you have something uh, you can make the additional beauty so range between 0 to 30 um, it will show in some sort of yellow color because it's maybe something I love and then if you want you can add more colors like let's say from 30 to let's say 40 you want to show that into something like let's make it 50 because it's the end of everything <laughs> it will be more colorful which maybe some people may not like it I don't know like just taking the random colors so that's it so that's how range 0 to 30 will be in yellow and from 30 to 50 you can do more customization it doesn't matter even there is something called unit you can uh, give unit anything that you like I would say degree Celsius whatever you can design as you like then click on create and as you can see right now you have a nice beautiful widgets right and uh, then you could possibly able to see the data shows up here right and uh, if you want to share this data with somebody um, you know then you have to make this channel public basically and to make the channel public you have to go to uh, the sharing option and in the sharing you say the channel view with everyone and that's basically how the channel will show up now in the public view you don't see uh, the gauge shows up here because if you want to add the gauge then let me add the gauge can here right it's like a waste of time but I just want to quickly show you how it's done and then um, as we put it here Celsius and then 0 to 30 I'm sorry this video will get a little bit longer but I just wanted to show you the real magic of this uh, platform right and so it will be like uh, the red color as we made it for the private view and then we say create and now this this is a private uh, uh, sorry this is a public view right you can look at this it's in a public view now this uh, URL on the top in the browser this will be public now so if I copy this URL and if I give it to my friend he can able to see my data uh, in a real-time live so let me show you so let's say if I open another browser Firefox where I have not logged in to my uh, ThingSpeak account okay oh no it takes a time crazy I'm sorry again to waste your time <laughs> I never used Firefox by the way sure let's just wait this browser to come up and now we have the browser here so now we have the browser here and I just simply uh, copy everything remove it and then put the URL that we copied from the things big channel so this is our unique uh, you know URL that belongs to our channel and it's a public so when I hit enter here I can then be able to see the channel is public so globally anybody anywhere in the world look at this even I have not logged into things big right so I still can able to uh, see the data look at this right the access is public and world can able to see uh, this channel so that's basically how you create a, a beautiful dashboard and URL and the other things and there are a lot of things can be can be discussed but I think this short video will give you a decent understanding how you can able to send the temperature sensor data LM35 temperature sensor which is connected to the node MCU or ESP8266 to the things big I hope you have found this video educational and entertaining if you need a premium courses everything will be explained in a nice detail 
to become a professional embedded software developer then I would ask you to check out the link in our video description and we have a awesome great quality courses for you waiting for you to be successful in your career thank you very much and we'll see us into the next video bye bye for now take care